Hey everybody, I am so excited to bring you this. We got Greg Boss Woolridge and Rob Stone. These are both the executive producers of the new film, the IMAX film called The Blue Angels. And Boss, not only was he my boss in The Blue Angels, many of you know, but um, he was the only three-time boss of The Blue Angels and the executive producer. He and Rob are the reason you're about to see the most incredible movie on The Blue Angels ever filmed. Boss, welcome to the show. Rob, I'll get to you in a second. Boss. All right. Thanks, Gooch. I'm glad to be here, man. I'll tell you what. This is the fruition of five years of work and planning and setbacks and the perseverance, you know, to make this happen. And some of the things I got to see while we were doing it, uh, just wonderful. And, and what this is going to bring the audience is just, it's going to change a lot of people's lives. It's really it. Wow, that's something we did as blues, and now you're still doing it. And for everybody, Rob Stone here, the executive producer, not only of this movie, but as you most of you know, he was the producer and director of Around the World Speed of Sound. And that's the first time, Rob, you got to meet Boss and I, and you produced an incredible documentary back then. Um, but congratulations on, on what you're doing now. Welcome to the show here, buddy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm also very glad to be here. And uh, like you said, you know, th this really has, has seeds that were planted years ago when we worked on a documentary Around the World of Speed of Sound. I had the great honor and privilege of not only meeting you both uh, when you were on the team, but but being able uh, to, to capture what the team um, was all about and try and present it to audiences. It's one thing to see them in the air and it's yeah. a great, amazing show, but but really having the opportunity to show the public what goes into how the Blue Angels do what they do and the level of excellence that they meet on a day-to-day -day basis um, was really uh, just a, a tremendous privilege. And now um, you know, with this new technology and doing it in IMAX on a, on a whole new canvas. Uh, honestly, it, it, both, uh, I'm just incredibly fortunate, incredibly lucky. And again, just uh, honored to be working with, um, you know, Boss, who is a legend, as you know, and, uh, and, and yourself and, and, and the Blue Angels. I mean, you know, just uh, it, you can't help but be inspired by being around them. So um, really anxious and excited to get this out to the world. Glad to be here. Man, Rob, it's so good to see you. We, we still work together, so I get to talk to you every day. But, you know, what you created that first time was, I think, the, the best behind the scenes and really got the feeling of what, what is the makeup of the individuals and the team and what we stand for. That was the first time that anyone was allowed in to film the debrief. Boss, I think you allowed Rob, to do that, we had never, never allowed that before. Uh, and I know you guys go into that, into this new film. All right, so let's take a look at the trailer and what these people are going to experience. Here we go. First time you take off, you got to push the I believe button. I fell in love with aviation at four years old. My dad took me to an air show and I got to watch the Blue Angels fly for the very first time. This year, we're bringing five new people into this team. Something I never thought was actually gonna happen. It's one in a million. We only have three months to get to a point where we can take it on the road. It can be frustrating at times. The challenge is to get the newbies up to speed and that can be scary. When you're flying 12 inches apart, Everybody's lives are in each other's hands. It's an eye-opener for how inherently dangerous this job is. Ready, roll, hat. Every once in a while, the jets just kind of freeze. And the world around you seems to spin. To make six jets fly as one, that's the Blue Angel magic. I just pinched myself when I get a chance to be part of it. With all these things that I've done. Whoa, boss and Rob, this is incredible. I know I just, my, my hairs, the little hairs are starting to stand up on the, on the back of my neck. 
having experienced some of that. Hey, boss, what was uh, what was some of the takeaways? What was the experience you had filming this? It was a lot of work. It was getting through. Uh, when Rob, Rob and I started this, we thought, we'll just pull this together, you and I, my brother, and we'll uh, we'll pull something off here on a almost like a institutional documentary, maybe not a movie, maybe a movie, and get corporate sponsors. So we jumped in after some of the, you know, some of the usual suspects like Boeing and USAA and Southwest Airlines and others that have great respect for the military and Boeing, you know, making the airplane that the team flies and was started flying in, in 2021 as well, the newer Boeing uh, F-18. So just jumping right into it like that on a smaller scale, but but knowing we could get it done because Rob has done it before with that great documentary he made, the Cable Ace Award winning doc. Uh, so we went, we went after it. And uh, I think what struck me was some of the areas that the hurdles that we had to jump over, getting it through the Navy, you know, and they have good reason not to let us, let anybody just, just anybody in bed with Navy units, because they there's things we got to watch out for, tactics and classified stuff, right? Um, that was a challenge because they wanted distribution and money that was where we were going to get our money before they would let us actually get a production assistance agreement, PAA. Uh, I mean, and all the nuts and bolts. Yeah. There were so many details. So, yeah, that's, that's what struck me up front was this is going to be tougher than I ever thought it would be. Well, and, and it took or- longer. Yeah. Then, of course, the coronavirus came, right? COVID. And so that set back all the people that were interested in sponsoring because they didn't we didn't know what the world was going to be, you know. And so we really went on a on a a long wait there. Uh, Still, uh, I was still praying for positive outcomes. And uh, and we we ran into some luck with uh, Kevin LaRosa and a couple other folks that pointed us in the right direction. And and then Glenn Powell, Glenn Powell, you know, he heard about it. He said, oh, we got to do this. And that's that's when it really took off. What do you say, Rob? What do you what do you yeah, think? No, I, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, this was kind of years in the making. Um, and originally, I think the idea was to do it for television, you know, that we were we were thinking, OK, we'll get some corporate sponsorship, um, try and try and get some support. And we did. We had such great momentum. Everybody loved the idea. Everybody loved the idea of, of showing the 21st century Blue Angels, you know, and what and what that was all about. And we had great momentum. Like Boss said, the pandemic hit and everything just, you know, stopped to a halt. Nobody's going to air shows. Everybody's isolated. We didn't know. I mean, the world didn't know. Right. There were a lot of unanswered questions. Um, so we didn't know if we were kind of dead in the water. Luckily, um, through that time and, and people hearing about it and like, like boss mentioned, um, Kevin LaRosa, who was the aerial coordinator for Top Gun Maverick. And if you recall, after the pandemic, they held up Top Gun Maverick, the, the movie, the Tom Cruise movie and Kevin LaRosa and his team who were the, uh, the aerial coordinators on that. Um, you know, they, they, they didn't know when their film was going to be out at the same time. Um, and, and again, just want, you know, we were lucky enough to have these people, you know, all these amazingly talented people who heard about the, fi- the possibility of doing a film on the blue angels, like Kevin, like Glenn Powell. And suddenly there was renewed interest on doing this on a scale that I don't think either right. of us really even imagined. Um, and, and just briefly, just to, uh, you know, again, we have just some amazing partners. First of all, obviously the Blue Angels. I mean, we couldn't have done this without them and the Navy and, and the assistance that, that we got from them and, and the trust. Um, but also on the filmmaking side, uh, you know, J.J. Abrams and Glenn Powell, and, uh, uh, Glenn Zipper at Zipper Brothers Films, John Turner at IMAX, who's in charge of documentaries at IMAX, Paul Crowder, who was our wonderful director of the film, uh, Sean Stewart, who was a producer, Hannah Mangella, also at Bad Robot, which is JJ's production company, um, Mark Monroe, who's been involved with some amazing documentaries and, and, and a writer, producer, and Kevin, and, and, and many others. I'm sure we're leaving yes. some folks yes, out. Yeah. 
Jess Young is she's Jessica, incredible. Jessica, Jessica Young was our director of photography, and she, uh, I can't tell you how meticulous she was. Remember, boss, even in the planning, in the early stages, yeah. storyboarding out what the shots that we want, we're looking for, or hoping to get in the cockpit, over the shoulder, you know, and as, as well as, um, you know, the people, because we really wanted to make this not just about the hardware, but but the uh, but but the people as well, and the, and the characters. So he's a he's a great interviewer, and uh, Jess, Jessica and I actually went out to Patuxent River, the naval uh, test testing facility in Maryland, and looked at the cameras that we could put on the wing of airplanes that they used for all kinds of technical stuff back at Patuxent River. We, she and I went out there, talked to them, how could we get this done? And they said, okay, well, this here's some ideas because we wanted to use this Sony Venice camera which is the same one they use in Top Gun because it creates IMAX quality images. And that's, by the way, why you need to go to an IMAX theater and see this, because that's what it's made for. And it's only there for a week. So you got to make a plan. Get out there and see it. Here's a fun story about John Turner, too, a senior vice president of documentaries at IMAX. He said, the Blue Angels and IMAX are made for each other. The mm -hmm. impact, the impact, it's got to be on IMAX, you know, so he said, I'll do this. And that was huge. That, that I mean, he reached into his wallet and said, we're going to do this. The one funny thing happened, we were doing the show on Pensacola Beach. And there's a pass on the beach, as you remember, Gooch, that you've flown. It goes right over the pier. You got a big yellow, orange stripe hanging down from the pier where the plane has got a hit, right? We talked to powers of being to letting us go out there and be at that point and uh i took i said john and, and let's go out and watch it from the pier watch the show watch the show did you, you know did you tell him what was going to happen no no okay said, let's this go out and watch his, the show out. his first time to see the blue angels live by the way ever yeah, yeah. And, and so we got out there and we're watching he says i can't believe you did this boss and i said yeah yeah i didn't do it like these guys these guys are, i'm just Got to hang out with him. Uh, and so I said, pretty soon there's going to be a maneuver. And what I want you to do is let's sit down on the pier and <laughs> put your fingers between the slats. Hang on. You know, <laughs> he, what are you talking about? I said, okay, just, just, just trust me on this. And the solo came in. One of the solos came in. Was that six or five that does that? It's, it's five. It's right? five. five. Yeah, you, yeah, you've yeah. done that. It was chewy. It was Chewy, yeah. Came in, and I said, here he comes. Now watch this, watch this. Hang on. Boom. The pier is about 20 to 30 feet high. The pass is at 50 feet. So that plane was about 20 feet over our heads. And he just, yeah. he gasped. And I, I was hoping it wasn't a gasp of fear. He just <laughs> a huge smile on his face and said, whatever you guys need. Whatever you need. <laughs> so that was like, a you huge know. selling point. It was so much fun. And and uh, we got uh, the first shot in the trailer shows that five yes. coming across yeah. to open that trailer. And it shows in the movie, too. So that's a lot of fun stuff about the people uh, Rob was talking about. Uh, tremendous professionalism. That impressed me. They were as professional as the Blues. I mean, getting things done on time, going knowing where to go. Paul Crowder calling the shots. You know, let's get this. Let's get that. And I was telling him, you got to capture this, you know, got to capture that. Or I would say, you know, we can't do some of these because it's a distraction, right? And that was a, that was a trust. That's how we built that trust between us and the product, between us, production company, former blue and, and the, and the current team. So, you know, well, and, and also, you know, just the fact that I, I, I don't know if people know this, but Again, this, this is the real deal. You know, it's not like we could ask the Blue Angels to alter their flight schedule for us. We we had to work around their normal schedule and try and capture everything, either when they're doing a show or a practice. Um, again, you know, with 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 Kevin LaRosa, who's up in a helicopter, mm -hmm. uh, filming from a helicopter in the airspace of the Blue Angels while they're doing you know, uh, a flight that's never been allowed before and uh, obviously had to be worked out very meticulously between him and Mike Fitzmaurice, who is his partner. We had a former 
Blue Angel that was in the right seat, boss, or left seat? Left seat. Left seat of the helicopter. Left seat of the helicopter. Also for safety and for, you know, just knowing the maneuvers. Bob, um, Lance, but- Bob Lance Benson had flown every position on the Blues except the lead because he got called back a couple times. Yeah, he was awesome. And he, Lance, Bob, his call sign, Bob and, and Kevin briefed this extensively. And the morning that they were going to do it there in Pensacola, the hair was, you talk about the hair up coming up on the back of your neck. As a former boss, I said, man, this is way out there. And I said, uh, boss Kessel rang. I said, boss, are you comfortable with this? He said, yeah, yeah. And Kevin and Bob had briefed it so thoroughly, hours and hours and hours of study that they knew and Bob knew exactly where to put the helicopter to capture the best aspects of each maneuver. And I told boss, I said, I wouldn't be surprised if, to hear you guys call a no maneuver many times, which was what you could state the boss or anybody in the flight could state no maneuver because you felt uncertain about where we we're going and how this is going to turn out. They, it went flawlessly. That was beautiful. Mm. Let's, let's talk about how you built that trust. Cause that is magical. What you just described, um, you know, first off, Rob, you built that trust with boss and I, and we brought you into the debrief for the first time, the sanctum, the inner sanctum of a Blue Angel debriefing room. Um, a, did, did you go into the debriefing room again with the current team? And did how did you guys build the trust that you needed, boss, like you just described, to put other airplanes into the zone, the airspace? Well, for, for first off, for one thing, you know, boss Wooldridge, uh, really was, I can't say enough about how valuable and, and how much the trust was built, just knowing, you know, the, the team not only knows boss, they know he's a legend on the team. The only three-time leader, um, knows that, uh, you know, really from all of us, from the get-go, we were all about safety. You know, we didn't want to be too much of a distraction. We knew you can't help but be a a bit of a distraction when you have cameras around and so forth. But we really tried very hard to work closely with the team to kind of let them know, hey, we'll take your lead. Uh, You give us the parameters. If if there's something that we can't be at, that's fine. You know, we, we wanted to try and let them know that we were all, number, our, our number one priority was was safety for everybody. Um, uh, on the flight line, the crew, everybody. Uh, and then also, again, just having, uh, you know, what, what Boss and I tried to do with, with the team, even before they met the IMAX crew and Paul and everybody who came out, was to let them know that that was our priority. That they, they knew that we were looking to do to really show the real heroes that, that 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 you guys are. I mean, I'm an outsider. I wasn't a Blue Angel. I wasn't in the Navy. Um, and to me, one of the most special things about having this film out there um, is a chance to really show who the real heroes are and really show how it's done. And they wanted it to be real. They wanted it. You know, they didn't. They, they wanted it to be very authentic. And we. Uh, uh, I, I think once they really understood that, and of course they they knew having boss there is just a uh, you know just, just was a huge blessing for us, and and also um, they knew that that uh, they could trust us that we weren't going to do anything to uh, to put anybody in danger or to 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 show the team in in a way that they wouldn't like to be be seen. But that comes naturally. We didn't we didn't stage anything. It's not manufactured. And I think that's that's really the point. When audiences see this, I think that's going to be even more impressive to them than even seeing them live is seeing what goes into it and seeing the diversity on the team and the different backgrounds and all these people coming together to reach a, a, a level of excellence that is unmatched that, that that I've seen anywhere else. So it's a, it's a real, real chance to bring people together and, and toward a common goal. So. I was, I was real impressed with how fast the production company garnered the trust of the team. You know, you, you know, we all in our non Hollywood lives, you know, we heard about all the crazy crazies and the, you know, the uh, finicky people. No, 
these these men and women on the production team were so professional and they earned respect and trust very quickly. What they said they were going to do, they did. They listened. They went, you know, wh where they can go and didn't go where they shouldn't go. Um, it was just a lot of respect mutual between the team and the production company. And it made it, uh, made it go so smoothly. It was terrific. Well, let's dive into now. What yeah, are audiences? The, the only thing, thing I was going to say is the, the only thing, again, being the outsider, not being a blue angel, like, like yourself and boss, um, mm -hmm. that I just can't state enough is once that trust was established, they let us in as part of their family. They let us in as part of their team. And, and that's that still uh, you know, blows my mind to this day. And 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 without that, without really allowing us to to uh to have that kind of access, um, we we never would have been able to to produce what what we did with uh with with our incredible filmmaking team. Well, that's with a big point, you know, that family uh on the blues is very special, and for you all to be part of that and be brought in is just phenomenal. Hey, let's let's talk about some of the uh, fun, exciting things. What is an audience going to experience in this? And um, let's tell some stories. Tell some stories of how it was captured. I know you had a seven jet that sometimes flew outside the formation. You had helicopters getting high-speed shots. Um, let's dive into it. What's going to be the experience for the movie goer? That was great. The uh, pub actually flew the spare a bunch. And because the Blue Angels are involved with public relations and garnering, gathering as much of this media as they can, it fit right in with their profile. So Bub would go out and chase, they call him he's the cowboy flight, right? He was the cowboy. Chase the formations, fly around them. Excuse me. Uh, do stuff that was just terrific that hasn't been seen before. And then some of the, I was always looking, when we went to different cities, you know, I went with them to Chicago and Seattle and San Francisco and and, uh, you know, Manhattan Beach, L.A., uh, San Diego, all over the place, and Hawaii. We went to Hawaii, beautiful filming down there. Um, I was always looking for the highest place to look down and watch them from, you know. So where was that in Chicago, boss? Because you and I were there. I happened to be there also. And I call you up and you're like, hey, I'm on the top of which building was it? You yeah, know? this was the, the Trump building, which is truly the tallest building in Chicago. Oh. Somebody call baloney on that one but i think that's the case and and the at the very tip top of the building and so there's a rail going around and it's only about well two feet high and it looks like a piece of railroad track right and i thought well that's not very much to hold you back it's not there to hold you back it's for the uh the window washer window washer ice you know so you could crawl right out to the edge of the building and look down and oh my gosh and the, and the sights we saw from up there the flying Terrific. You're you're actually shooting down at the yes. diamond as they go by, right? Yeah. That's amazing. Oh yeah. 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 That's it was amazing. Uh, Seattle, I mean, same thing. And then uh uh we went out to Alcatraz to film from there in San Francisco. We had a little weather challenge there, which was really sad because that's such a great place to film. Uh, we got a little bit of stuff there, which was good, but uh just just the things we got to see and the perspectives were Marvelous. Well, tell me how the team adapted. You know, we talk about adapting to change and, and really being able to create some stuff. I, I remember I was at that San Francisco one, too, and the weather was coming in. Right. And I was absolutely shocked that this team, the the team. What year was that? 2022, 2023, 22, yeah. 22, 22 into 23, mostly yeah. 22. Yeah. yeah. They were able to fly a show, boss, that you and I would have had to cancel, you know, back in our day. I mean, the weather, the, the the bridge was, you could barely see it, the checkpoints. And I was shocked in a positive way of how they were able to adapt with you guys there too. So tell me more about that. What did you observe, boss? You've been a leader three times. You know, um, how did this team, what did they do special to make this happen? Yeah, well, the leader, uh, Brian Kesselring, boss Kesselring, G is his Lee call sign. He's like a G monster, I think, but uh, loves those G forces. He uh, he had the complete trust of the team because it was his third year. 
So that was a big advantage. It's like when I took the team to Moscow, it was my second year, which you had the experience, you know, and, and everybody has a trust level, the more experience you have. So that was uh, something they had in boss and he would, he would kind of make those calls. He'd listen, you know, everybody okay with this, you know, like we always do, but he would say, yeah, let's go ahead and give this a try or give that a try. And Chicago even did that because the weather was moving in from the East blocking a lot of shots. And he actually pulled off a bunch of maneuvers that uh, were just awesome. Not for us, but for the crowd, he didn't do it to satisfy us, but it did help us, but it was just to please the general public by showing something out there. And that was, that was the goal uh, without jeopardizing safety. Safety was always the number one thing. And with us, especially too, um, I'd have to go back to the helicopter flights that that stuff flying the helicopter in the demonstration never done before air to air shots never seen before and with the phantom camera was it a thousand frames a second or ten thousand frames a second uh, thousand frames a second so you only get you fill a data card in 10 seconds but you can get six minutes of video and that's where you're going to get the shots slow motion <laughs> shots the planes together vapors coming off I mean, and then on, on the big screen, on the IMAX screen, unbelievable. So that's uh, that's to look forward to. Got to see that. Rob, what were some of your favorite shots? What 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 are they going to see? What were you able to capture? Yeah, I mean, again, people have never seen seen uh, anything like this as far as uh, the the Blue Angels, the vantage point that uh, Kevin LaRosa and his team got. Sometimes they were above the maneuver in a helicopter. So in other words, when the when the formations are going, they're filming right underneath. I mean, it was it was incredible. There were some times wow. where we were on the ground, Boss and I, and we're looking up and going, are they gonna be okay with that? But but they they were, you know, they had really rehearsed it and made sure everything was safe. Um, another thing that we did is we filmed out of Fat Albert. Fat Albert is a C-130 that the team uses, you know, to take the maintenance crew and all the people, you know, it's, it's a, it's kind of a traveling circus week to week and a rock and roll show, you know, where they bring all their crew, all the equipment, it all goes on the C-130. Well, the C-130 has a big old door in the back that opens up and it's just the sky. So we actually had, you know, our camera shooting outside of that. And then the, the, the Delta or all the jets, all the, the, the Hornets would come up very close to um, the C-130 and, and there's some great shots just out of that, that gateway. And I'll, I'll never remember, never forget, I, I was on one of the flights and Jessica, our DP, is tethered, right? So she's on like a, a hooked in, but she's, you know, she's getting pretty close to that door. And uh, it, 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 but it, but it, it, it really made for some really spectacular spectacular shots you know, wow one so of, we one of the things you'll see gooch is uh that's never been seen before is the vulnerability of the human being that's what and, I and woman and by the way we captured the selection of the first woman to fly in the formation for the blue angels groundbreaking and, about yeah, time it's about name. time Absolutely. Uh, but you'll see some shots there that show that they'll explain to you i'm not going to give them away why there are a lot of inherent challenges in doing this uh man overcoming nature if you will um man in full control of the airplane man the generic you know man and woman um there is a scene in the training process that's not in the airplane that shows people losing consciousness the centrifuge Yep. That has never been seen before, and uh, uh, but the joy of of learning how to overcome that and uh, mitigate and for, that. Exactly, and for those who don't know that you know the Blue Angels do not wear G suits, so you have to you know it's 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 very physical, um, and for the first time you're kind of seeing like like Boss said, kind of what what you have to do to really step up your game and and also not only physically, but I think, boss, you would agree mentally as well, you know, in terms of the mindset that you have to adopt because you're, you know, the, what the Blue Angels do is unlike 
uh, anyone. So it's it's a it's a, a physical and and mental challenge. But you it's amazing to. that the the men and women who do this are able to uh, to to adjust and adapt and and make it look flawless. You have to you have to elevate your personal beliefs. Your belief levels is. Gooch, you and I talk about that a lot. Elevate your beliefs, you know, yep. challenge that fear that might come along with what you're about to do, but elevate your beliefs in a, in a very, e not easy way, but positive way and, yep. and change what your thinking is about how you can do something. And we got to see that obviously firsthand and you'll see that in the movie, which is terrific. I'd like to say that you're going to see not only the six pilots and the couple of the other officers, but you're going to see the entire crew out there taking the creed, the Blue Angel creed at 5 a.m. in Chile, El Central, California, in winter training, shouting out that creed about their pride in being a Blue Angel. And then the work they did, the joy they experienced by doing that work and the trust that's engendered between the officers flying those airplanes and the other officers that are uh, running the show and the troops. I like to call them the troops. They're, they're just, yeah. you know what? Uh, we would like the team we were watching and like the teams I was with, we would fly, you know, take borrow the airplanes for 45 minutes and then count on the fact that the people that owned them, no, not owned them, but kept, kept them in good shape, had done so in a, in a professional and praiseworthy way. And they did. And we, I never pre-flighted an airplane, which is kind of cool. Uh, neither did you, Gooch. I mean, it's just that trust level. You can see that in the movie and, and you can also see the joy in the people, you know, it's a lot of smiles, a lot of handshakes, a lot of glad to be here. It was just uh, terrific. It's going to, people will love it. It, it's, it, it elevates, it elevates society in general. Yes. That's what I wanted to get to is the human element of how this movie relates to just teams, people, the basic, trust and love and teamwork and support and positivity. Well, how would you describe, what are some of the takeaways that you're going to get from this movie that is more transcendent than the actual flying? What are, what are some that people are going to walk away with? I think uh, uh, immediately they're going to say, I didn't know. And they won't say this to themselves, but this is a, this will, ooze into them is that man and women, men and women, man, the generic term, sorry, keep referring back to that, but human beings can do stuff that shouldn't be able to be done. And it's just wow. because they, they, they practice, they train, they change what they think they can do and they go for it. Now, I mean, there's a great way this movie moves forward talking about going from, you know, being in the fleet, with airplanes six to 10 feet apart, joining the blue angels, starting the season three feet apart. And then at part of the, the storyline is how do you move closer and closer and closer? And the visuals of that are pretty cool. And we, the technical stuff we used in there was, was pretty, pretty awesome. So I think that those takeaways that, wow, this is what man, this is what people can do. Well, I want to be part of that in some fashion. And that's, that's yeah. all. And how to apply it to your own life as a business leader or a teammate. And uh, I think that's going to be just huge. And boss, we'll get a chance to talk about that, right? We'll get a chance to take teams and leaders through beyond the movie of how do you take this incredible experience of that continuous improvement, that trust, but most importantly, this mindset of glad to be here um, into your everyday life and, and, and as, a, as a world. Rob, what would you say? What are some of the um, deep takeaways that you hope people walk away with from this movie? Yeah, I mean, first of all, people are going it, to, it's a great ride. You know, people are going to enjoy it and, and they're going to they're gonna love it. But, but, but also, you know, the Blue Angels were started back in 1946. So the oldest flight demonstration squadron in existence the demographics for people who have loved going to Blue Angel shows with their dad, with their grandfather, you know, whatever, it cuts across all boundaries. It cuts across all boundaries of, of age, gender, religion. Uh, again, like Boss said, there's 141 men and women 
in the Navy and Marine Corps that, that make up the Blue Angels, come from all different walks of life, come together for a common goal. And it's just inspiring. And not only is it fun and it's cool and that's great, but it but it, it's incredibly inspiring for anybody, for anybody who has a dream, you know, for, for, for anybody who, uh, you know, wonders what human beings are capable for. And, and, and it may... It may be flying 12 to 18 inches in a jet, or it could be their own version of whatever they want to do in life and 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 uh, and, and try and achieve and, and, and reach that excellence for themselves. To me, the great thing about this film, hopefully, is it's not only going to be uh, inspiring and fun for audiences to see and have a great time, but uh, I, I hope it will inspire them to go after their own dreams. Oh, nice. Nice. Boss, I'm going to let you answer that same question, what your hope is for somebody as they're walking out of that theater. And then I want to uh, I want to get the glad to be here feeling from each and every one of you. But um, boss, what do you hope people are going to take I hope, away? I hope having seen the film, they'll come to realize there are no boundaries to what they can achieve. And they come out motivated like I you know what? I'm going to take this. I'm just going to go ahead head first, headlong into this project that I want to do because nothing's impossible. Surround yourself with good people. Go forward with strong beliefs that you can do it and get it done. And that, you know, that that's kind of a, a 30,000 foot view of what I want them to come out. I want them to come out happy, you know, excited, yeah. but I want them to believe in themselves at a higher level. And that, that is really cool. If you can get people to believe in themselves by seeing something that can be done, I think that's, that's my, and, and as Rob talked about diversity, how you bring everybody together, everybody plays a part with different perspectives and you have to grasp all those to, to make yourself better. And I think it's going to be cool. That's, that's one of the things I hope they walk out with. Well, I know as executive producers, you guys have put in so much of your own love and self poured it into the movie, um, knowing the blues too. Uh, I think about that boss, you know, the ambassador of goodwill, the making a difference in someone else's life. That idea of inspiring is to breathe life into someone else, right? And that's, as I heard you talk, I was like, wow, this film can actually do that. And we'll actually do that. Um, I just want to say thank you to the both of you for making this happen. I know it wasn't easy. Uh, There's lots of obstacles. Uh, May 17th, everybody, it's going to hit the IMAX theaters. You got one week till May 23rd. Then it'll be on what, Amazon? Street? Amazon Prime. Uh, yep, Prime. yep. Right after that, it'll be available on Amazon Prime. Okay. Uh, let's make sure that we can support as many people as we can to uh, support the Blues. Uh, I think the Blue Angel Foundation boss you were just talking uh, is going to be doing something on that. Um, let's, uh, let's wrap this portion with first off, everybody feel free to send us questions. There was a lot of questions we could have gone further into and, and we will at some point. So send us questions, uh, stay engaged, make sure you, you watch the movie, let us know how it goes. Um, boss and I are here and Rob to go deeper behind the scenes on what is actually happening behind the scenes there. But let's uh, go with you first, Rob and boss. You're going to get to have the last say as, as, as a boss always gets to. Um, uh, why are you glad to be here, uh, then, Rob? And, and why were you glad to get a chance to make this movie? Yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's a perfect question. You know, and, and you know more about glad to be here than, than, than almost anybody. And that's really what it's all about, honestly. I mean, uh, you know, glad to be here is something... Again, when I first came and sat in on a debrief with you guys years ago, um, and I heard, and I'd never seen a team, you know, with that that amount of teamwork, and go around and talk about different things. But you always ended your comments with "glad to be here," and I and and at first, you know, I didn't know exactly what that all meant. It means different things to different people, right? But um, I really think that's what everybody felt genuinely. Uh, to be able to work on this film. Um, they were genuinely glad to be here every day. And that was contagious that we picked up from the team and the, the way they led us into their family. Um, so for me, uh, just the opportunity to try and um, 
you know, let others kind of feel that and, and realize again, that, that, um, you know, if, if they can, there, especially in these times, you know, if there, if there's, if there's a way that we can focus on, um, the reasons to be glad to be here and, um, you know, just doing something to put something out positive in the world, no matter what you're doing, it, it could be in any, any, any realm of, uh, of profession or, or life. Um, but it's, it, I'm, I'm truly glad to be here and, and, and feel just very grateful and very lucky, uh, and fortunate to be able to have played a, uh, you know, small part in getting the, the blue angels story out to, uh, the people, which hopefully they'll leave with some, uh, some inspiration. And again, always, uh, grateful to, to work with both of you. So glad to be here. Wow, Rob, I couldn't say any, say it any better than that. I'll tell you, the, the glad to be here, people will be oozing glad to be here when they leave the theater, I think, because they'll be so happy to have seen what they got to see. And, you know, it, and and at the same time, seeing the challenges that, that the characters in the movie, the real people, overcame, I think that's a source of inspiration. And, and you know, mm -hmm. that makes me just uh, happy as a, as I can be, uh, but humble at the same time. I, you know, I feel humble with the fact that I got to experience that and that I got to be involved with helping make the movie and, uh, and the people that were on that team, both the production team and marketing and all, and uh, IMAX and Amazon, that team. And of course, the fantastic men and women of the blue angels that, uh, Makes me truly glad to be here. I'm appreciative of the opportunity. Boss uh, and Rob Sticks, your call sign. Uh, thank you guys, man. I can't tell you how grateful I am to still be working with you, to have those experiences that we've had back in the early 90s and how they just continue to get better and better with every film, every, every day. Uh, this is going to be truly an epic film. Everybody, make sure you get out there to see it and uh, – We'll keep filling in on some of the uh, behind the scenes, uh, what really it takes to uh, to raise your game to the next level. Glad to be here. Thanks, everybody. Be here. Thanks so much for Thanks. having us, Richie. Glad to be here. Yeah.